The Java Persistence API used to be part of the EJB specification until the release of EJB3. But the specifications are still closely related. And as we saw in the four tier architecture for enterprise applications, the business logic tier, where EJB technology resides, delegates certain responsibilities to the persistence tier, where JPA technology resides. In the context of Java enterprise applications, persistence refers to the ability to have data contained in Java objects automatically stored into a relational database. The technique used to do this is called object relational mapping or ORM. Essentially, it allows your business logic to treat the data in your relational database as Java objects rather than database records. JPA has its own SQL-like query language that allows you to do both static and dynamic queries. One benefit of this is that it allows you to change database vendors without significantly changing your application code. When you're using JPA, you no longer have to use JDBC SQL code. Recall that in the previous section of the NetBeans e-commerce tutorial, we used SQL query tags from the Java servlet tag library to access data from the database. And the results of our queries were stored in a not completely intuitive object of type result. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to replace those queries with relatively simple calls to session beans and entity classes. And the objects those calls give back to us will also be easier to use, like simple lists of records. Finally, data caching and optimization are already built in to the JPA objects. The kinds of JPA objects that we will be using are entities. Entity objects represent the rows of a particular table. If session beans are the verbs of a system, entities are the nouns. Session beans represent operations and entities represent data. An entity manager handles the CRUD database operations for the entity object. In our application, we will be accessing CRUD operations through methods in the session beans, which will then delegate the operations to the entity manager. JPQL is the SQL-like query language that JPA uses to search for entities. Besides JPA, there is one other specification related to the EJB specification that deserves mention. That is the CDI specification, which stands for Context and Dependency Injection. Dependency injection refers to the inclusion of a service object into a client object. The idea is that the client object requires a service object with a particular interface. And instead of the client object creating the service object, a third object called an injector manages the creation of the service object and gives it to the client. In this way, the client only needs to specify the interface of the service it needs without having to worry about the implementation details of the service object. Dependency injection therefore adheres to the software engineering principle of dependency inversion, which states that components should depend on abstractions or interfaces rather than concretions or implementations. Let's look at a simple example involving dependency injection. Here's some code with a private variable named hello user of type hello user bean. This class represents the client. And the hello user variable will hold the service object. The type hello user bean is the interface. That is the kind of object the client needs because it will use the service object to invoke the method call say hello. 
In this case, the injector is the EJB container. We know this because of the at EJB annotation on the instance variable. The EJB container will provide an instance of this client class with an appropriate hello user bean object that implements the say hello method. Notice that the variable hello user is never initialized in this code. Often, instance variables are initialized in the constructor, but let's assume for the sake of this example that the variable is not initialized in the constructor. In that case, I have a question for you. Suppose I removed the at EJB annotation, and suppose the instance variable hello user was never explicitly initialized. My question is, would this be valid Java code? In other words, would the code compile? And can you tell me why or why not? I'll give you five seconds to think about how you would answer that question or you can pause the video if you like. Five seconds starting from now. Okay, the answer is that the invocation of the say hello method would cause a null pointer exception because hello user was never initialized. So its value would be null. When you see annotations such as at EJB, at resources, at persistence context, or at inject on variable declarations, it typically indicates that the implementations of those objects will be injected by the container rather than created in the current class.